Uh, amazing it, it, scene. It is a heat wave, and you can tell they are not affected by the weather and the conditions. And you're going to see a lot of kids come out sleeveless like you have the kicker right now, but it's championship football. Buckle up. They're going to decide it on the field, Dave. North Dakota State won the toss. The kicker slipped on the kickoff, and the ball's going to roll out of bounds. So the Bobcats get a little break. They'll have good field position to start. Free kick out of bounds drive. on the kicking team. Ball we placed at the 35-yard line. First down, Montana State. And we'll follow that story. The turf is a little wet here this morning and this afternoon. Let's go down to Stormy Bonatoni. Dave, I know all the talk this postseason offensively for Montana State has been about touchdown Tommy Malott, but their leader on that side of the ball all season long, running back Isaiah Afonse, who missed the semifinal game a couple weeks ago, dealing with chronic knee pain. Head coach Brent Vegan told us he is back today. He's ready to go. And in terms of touches, it's still going to be limited. They're going to see how he feels early on, feel it out, but they're really excited he's able to go today. And Vegan says a lot about who he is as a person and player to gut it out and be here with his teammates. All right, that's obviously a big part of the story for the Bobcats offense right now. It is their star wide receiver, Lance McCutcheon, and Montana State does a lot of this. Different formations. It's been a good formula with Tommy Malat, the true freshman from Butte, who has become a hero. In a short time in the state of Montana, he's going to run the ball and then fake the run and throw it to McCutcheon out of the backfield for a nice first play from scrimmage immediately into North Dakota State territory. Love it. They want to settle the kid down. They want to run the football. Everybody knows that. They're run first, set up a play action, let the young freshman quarterback get a throw in early because you're going to need his arm at some point in the game. Good job of selling this. Lead block, get rid of the football. Nice play call by Taylor Housewright, the offensive coordinator. That's 18 yards on the first play from scrimmage. Now, Ifonse, you heard Stormy talking about him. He is in the game for the first time. So the lot's left, and the lot's going to run the ball on first down, takes a big hit right at the line of scrimmage. You talked about the run game in the open. The North Dakota State defense has been so good. So for Afonso, for Malat, just an enormous challenge to move the ball today. Yeah, North Dakota State wins the battle of the trenches on the offensive side, the defensive side. But give me a runner that's got over 1,500 yards rushing. If he can find a couple creases, he doesn't need a lot of daylight, but he can be a difference maker if he has that little window to explode. A single season rushing record in the proud history of Montana State football. Just underway, this FCS championship game. Malat, play fake. And he's going to step up and fake a pass, sort of stumbling ahead. He is no shy runner. This young freshman is a tough guy when he's got the football. Fantastic decision making here. Young quarterbacks normally they panic, they rush, they hold on to it. He's athletic, was going to go for the throw, but decided positive yardage is all you need when you're a run base attack. And already we're seeing the footing a little bit of an issue on this wet natural grass surface. Malat spins through the first tackle and gets the Montana State first down. I'm telling you, this, this freshman, he's not scared. He is not running for contact. He's playing his style of football, making good decisions. I'm really impressed with what I see from this young freshman going against, obviously, the toughest challenge in his young career. Had never started a game until the playoffs. The passing numbers have been good. He's protected the ball. The rushing numbers have been spectacular. He'll throw it here and completes it to McCutcheon again along the sideline for a positive first down game. Well, that's not good. He, he's he's oh. limping a little bit. And he's pointing to that calf. I don't know what happened on that play. But that is not good for the Bobcats. We'll see. Second down and a handoff straight ahead of Fonse. Number 22, Isaiah Fonse. I mean, we know he's not afraid to go in there and mix it up. Picking up the yard is it towards the end of it. Oh, it's his ankle. So he turned that ankle. Yeah, he, he's really looking toward the sideline like, you want me to tough it out, keep going. He's going to leave it all on the field, but monitor that closely. So now third and short. This is where Malat's running, if he's healthy, is such a weapon. 
McCutcheon leaves the backfield. Malat throws over the top and it is incomplete. Good coverage there. It's fourth down. Yeah, and you have to think if he's not limping, they run the football with a little RPO option there. But with him not having the ability to run, you can tell he's really favoring that right ankle, trying to protect it. Tough break for Montana State in the middle of their opening drive. Wow, that is a huge story on the first drive of this game. And we'll see 45 yard field goal attempt. So the Bobcats are going to try to get some points with Blake Glester. And they're faking it. Glester is going to punt it. So it was a fake field goal and a punt that goes for a touchback. That did not work the way Montana State wanted it to. And and who knows, maybe it was an option, fake pass or punt the ball. That is the story early in this game. Tommy Malad, can he get healthy for the rest of this one? Championship on the line in Frisco. Now, the state of Montana and the state of North Dakota, they share a border. That doesn't mean the two campuses are really all that close. In fact, they're 755 miles apart. And the fan bases have turned out in huge numbers, coming a long way to North Texas for this FCS championship game. Now the Bison of North Dakota State have the ball for the first time. And a play fake for their young quarterback Cam Miller who's got a man open and he misses. Hunter Lipke who had the huge game against JMU in the semifinal win. That was an opportunity for the Bison right away. Yeah, you know, and everybody knows where Hunter Lipke is going to be on the field. Cam Miller came in, took over starting quarterback duties around the middle of the season, and he's had success. Keeping the running game going, you see the completion percentage. 68% pass on the year to go along with a powerful running game. That's how the Bison play offense. Maybe not as dramatically as Tommy Malott, but he took over midway through the year, as you're talking about. So it's... It's been a year of breakout for Miller and now good defense from Montana State. Christian Watson who is playing today after missing the playoffs all the way through until this championship game slipped and went down for a loss. Yeah, you see coming around here kind of slide a little jet sweep right there but great recognition by Callahan O'Reilly weak side linebacker. And this is a well scouted team. What I mean by that is they're going to read their keys. Montana State with Coach Brett Vegan knows we have to play assignment football. Good team defense. Third and 14. Listen to how loud it is. We're just a few minutes into this game. Miller throws and it is caught. A leaping catch along the sideline by Watson. First down Bison. That's why you like having six foot five inch wide receiver. He's the, the speed and the threat to get by you. But look at him body up and catch this ball at its highest point before the safety comes over. Huge conversion for North Dakota State. That was a good throw. Christian Watson, who's going to play at the NFL level, and that is a very talented young man playing in his final game. And finally healthy after missing the playoffs with a hamstring problem. First down, North Dakota State, the straight ahead run for Tameric Williams for a short game. Meanwhile, with Tommy Malat in the injury tent, Montana State's having to at least play Tucker Rovig, who has a lot of playing experience. He's won a lot of games. He's played in the playoffs before, so it's not like he's an inexperienced guy. Very different kind of player than Malat. Different offense, too. Yeah. A six foot five inch quarterback likes to throw it more than he likes to run it. Athletic enough, but Malat's going to be the key. Well, we'll see. So Tucker's got to get ready just in case. Second and seven. Miller with the play fake. All kinds of time is going to throw deep and incomplete. Trying to hit the tight end, Josh Babich. Third down. Nicely thrown ball here. Give your tight end an opportunity to make the catch, but puts one hand up instead of two. Tight ends aren't wide receivers. You expect the wide receiver to come down with that ball with a tight end that radius for catch, a little bit smaller, not able to come up with it. Another third and long for the Bison. So you see number one in the huddle. In fact, he's going to line up in the backfield alongside the quarterback, Cam Miller. Yeah, monster game against Montana State in the playoffs two years ago. When these two teams met, Miller slips as he tries to scramble. He's going to get the first down and more. The straight-ahead quarterback run into Montana State territory. 
Well, as a quarterback, if you know your offensive line is not going to let you get hit, all you have to do is find a running lane. And the moment there was any type of daylight, took off running right up the middle. Easy conversion on third down, keeping the drive alive. So far, I mean, it's early, but the Montana State pass rush, which has been a huge part of their success, tons of sacks and tackles for loss. Cam Miller's had plenty of time. Can't get to him right now. That's something to keep an eye on. You're exactly right, though. Under center, hand off right side, and a lot of room there. Powerful running. Hunter Lipke with a penalty flag thrown. The do it all guy for this North Dakota State offense. This one may be coming back. Holding number 67, offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of foul. Replay first down. Pretty rare penalty against the true veteran, not just of this team, but you could say in the history of college football. Cordell Volson, the North Dakota kid, who today is playing his 65th career game. As far as we can tell, nobody's ever played that many in college football history. Yeah, particularly North Dakota State, we know that. But I think I just saw there's somebody coming back next year for a seventh year of college football next year. So record may be in jeopardy when it ends. They're coming for you, Cordell. <laughs> Well, holding negates the nice run. Now Quincy Patterson in for the first time. The big, powerful running quarterback who was the starter for the Bison for the first part of the year. That was a good gain on first and long. Something that you're seeing from North Dakota State, which I'll give them credit, they normally don't do. They normally win on first down to play ahead of the change. But here, their first down offense has been pretty bad. They've had to play from behind, but they've showed the ability to convert on third and long. Miller back in at quarterback, second down, a little pump fake, and he's going to run again. Cam Miller takes a big hit. And in the area of Troy Anderson, you got to be careful there. Anderson got a pop on Cam Miller. The quarterback run game is a big part of this Bison offense. Yeah, they can get it in the end zone. I'm impressed with the 11 touchdowns from the quarterback position. You mentioned Quincy Patterson, 6'3", 250 pounds. He's a load to bring down. And Cam Miller, a little bit more shifty. As a runner. Now he comes in for this third and long four, maybe five. For Matt Ence's team. First quarter of this FCS championship game. Patterson will fake it to Williams and Patterson like. with all kinds of room down the left side. There goes Patterson inside the 10 and finally pushed out of bounds at about the eight. It'll be first and goal. Just talked about the production of the running game at the quarterback position and right on cue Quincy Patterson Q Patterson delivered great decision in the run game. Once you see those two white jerseys peak in the backfield it becomes a foot race to the outside. Great job by the tight end number 81 Josh Babichek getting there. Well, look at this this close to being a touchdown but good effort to stop him. Just short of the end zone. That was 34 yards. The Bison are three for three on third down already on their first drive. A little pitch play, broken tackle, touchdown. Hunter Lipke just knocking Bobcats down. What a first drive. High formation. They know Lipke's going to get the ball. But the Bobcat defense was aware of that, but they still could not bring him down. The offensive line for North Dakota State showing why they are the best offensive unit in FCS football. Impressive drive, 11 plays, 80 yards. And remember that first conversion on third and 14 to start the drive, and it ends up in the end zone. Yeah, they expect to be here. That doesn't mean they don't enjoy it. Every time they are undefeated in their championship game history and off to a great start, the Bison with a 7 0 lead. Well, obviously, the big story on the Montana State side is the true freshman quarterback, Tommy Mallott, and his ankle went down in the first drive, has been in the injury tent for a long time. He's out of the tent now. North Dakota State, meanwhile, goes down the field and scores a touchdown on their first drive. Matt McKay was the starter for the first 11 games, the full regular season. The coaching staff decided to make a change 
heading into the playoffs. McKay entered the transfer portal two days before Montana State's first playoff game. Tommy Milata never started a game. He's 3-0 and in the playoffs. He's been spectacular, but now he's banged up. And what you have to tell yourself is, can he protect himself? He's a running quarterback. Can he protect himself with an ankle that looks like it's 50%? I would say no. But you also have to flip it to script and say, you know what? We won with another quarterback that went 9 and 2, brought in another quarterback that went 3 and 0. Oh. So tell yourself it's the system, not the individual player, to keep the confidence of the rest of the team. A short kickoff returnable for the Bobcats. We're going to cut it upfield and get out past the 30. So that's a good return for Elijah Elliott. And we saw him a lot go back into the tent again just a moment ago, right as that kickoff was starting. So no Matt McKay who played so much of the year he went into the transfer portal as we told you so it's Tucker Rovig the junior who has played a lot of games he's won 18 games in his Montana State career so he's not inexperienced stuck around despite losing the job coming into this season and he will hand the ball off right side if trying to bounce it so tough to do and he goes down. Dawson Weber with the tackle for loss. And, you know, as an offense in a running game with field conditions going deteriorating quickly, you don't want to run sideline to sideline. They get you running sideways, and all of a sudden, look at the yellow jersey swarming around the football. A second and long, Afonso in the backfield. Now movement. Bison are convinced that Montana State moved, and I think they did. Backup quarterback comes into the game. Sounds a little bit different with the cadence or the count. Throw that in there along with a little crowd noise over on that right hash close to the North Dakota State sideline. They're hearing it right now. Straight ahead run, and Afonso, nice broken tackle. Ooh. He puts a big Ooh. pop on. Man, we saw Lipke do it on the other side. Now Afonso shows you why he's the single season Official rushing record in Andrew. Montana State history. This is the effort you need when your starting quarterback is out. Make a great individual play. Keep the balance. Keep the legs churning. Some help with the offensive line with Lewis Kidd, number 76. Help him keep his balance. But that's the type of effort you're going to need for the rest of this football game if you want to have a chance to be North Dakota State. And a Bison player is down. Man, that was a tough guy run. So while they attend to that player, we will take our break and come back for third and four in the first quarter right after this. And the Bobcats of Montana State, their starting quarterback, Tommy Mallott, still on the sideline. That right ankle injury on a really impressive first drive for the Bobcats. He went down. And that's big news and not good news for the number eight seed trying to pull the upset in this FCS championship game. Big play here with Tucker Robig on the field. Third and five. Justin Talbert, the player who's down from North Dakota State, did get up and walk off the field. Play fake. Grovig throws and a nice catch. Upended Nate Stewart hung on to the football for a first down conversion. Way to climb the ladder by Nate Stewart, the transfer from Akron little slip screen and you see him go up balls high it gives up his body knows he's going to get undercut still holds on for the huge play well big throws and incomplete here intended for McCutcheon on first and ten Again, take a little while for Rovick to get some tempo and pace going in this game on the previous play to Nate Stewart ball was delivered a little bit late than you need to have for game time speed then trying to throw the out route I'd like to see them give him a couple of easy throws crossing routes Hitch routes, easy throws, completions, so he can set up some type of rhythm in the passing game. I mean, you saw those numbers, all the experience from previous years. He has not played very much this season. Second and ten. Lane Sumner alongside of the backfield. Rovig now designed quarterback run for him. And look at Rovig go. First down and much more to the sideline and ducking out of bounds. 19 yards. 
How about the right side of that offensive line? Clearing out space, winning their battles. Good job by Tuiasa Sopo, number 51, the right guard. The nice B-gap running lane to run through. Rovich showing some speed for the six foot five inch quarterback. Taylor Tuiasa Sopo, who when he was being recruited by Montana State said, the only Montana I know anything about is Joe Montana. <laughs> and yet he's had a great career. For the Bobcats, Rovick this time gets spun to the ground and tackled by Jasir Cox. Well, coverage of the NCAA Men's and Women's Indoor Track and Field Championships begin on March 13th in Birmingham, Alabama. You can catch the championship on ESPNU, the ESPN app. You can also visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. First quarter, Bobcats trail 7-0 on the move here in this FCS championship game. First time that Montana State has played for a national title since 1984. They've waited a long time to get here. Rovig going to run again and picking his way forward. He'll get wrestled down. Jackson Hankey led the way. It'll be third down. The Bison, of course, are just about annual participants in this game, and they've never lost since their ninth. FCS championship game since 2011. They're 8 and 0 in their first eight trips, looking for their ninth title, which would add to their record. Meanwhile, first championship appearance since 1984. How about this, Montana State? One of the few programs in America to win a conference championship, national championship at three different levels: NAIA, Division II, and FCS or one AA. Very proud history. Play fake on third down, and the ball is batted down, knocked away. And that's Hankey again, who's the do-everything middle linebacker. He makes a tackle on second down. On third down, he knocks the ball down. The true North Dakota kid, former walk-on, that's always proven himself, overachiever, good job of reading the quarterback's eyes and then elevating to get that bat down to force the field goal attempt. That's two big third down stops for the Bison defense on the first two Montana State drives. This will be a 43-yard field goal try, and we'll see if they actually try it this time. With Blake... Lester. The footing has been a bit of an issue. That kick is on the way and it is no good. He missed it wide to the right. So I think two pretty good drives. And what does Brent Vegan's team have to show for it? No points. Donut zero and got to be disappointing because they move the football. They've crossed midfield every time. They've gotten some fantastic individual efforts, but give credit to that defense. For North Dakota State with their defensive coordinator, David Braun, bend but don't break. Matt Vince has to be proud of the job that his defense is doing, keeping them off the board. It's championship football. One key play here or there to determine what we see for this outcome. So the big tight ends in motion. Bison get the ball back, leading 7-0. And they'll hand it off straight ahead run. The power football of NDSU Tamaric Williams. A gap power football, right? That's it. That's what they call it. Everybody knows it's coming. There'll be some power football in that national championship game at the FBS level on Monday night presented by AT&T, 8 Eastern, Georgia, Alabama. Maybe not a gap power, at least a lot of it. <laughs> Look at this. They're lining up. You give them a seven-point lead. Now North Dakota State's going to make you feel their muscle a little bit and try and gain control of this football game. Miller in the pocket on second down throws wide open Christian Watson gets tackled at midfield first down Bison they are so happy to have him back and how does that happen I mean the number one offensive weapon for North Dakota State was open by 10 yards in the flat route no secondary defender around him easy throw easy catch that's stealing and maybe the highlight he's had a lot of highlights in his career maybe the highlight of his career was against Montana State in the playoffs two years ago back to back plays from scrimmage 70 plus yards for touchdowns back to back plays Bobcats people <laughs> have never forgotten that yeah, he's got the speed to do a difference maker that can absolutely burn here's Lipke and he's got a huge hole Lipke first down and more making his presence felt Okada got him to the grass yeah, great kick out block by the fullback. We know the Lipke plays fullback, but when they bring in Logan Hostet, he does a fantastic job with the kick out block. Coming around there, wham! 
That's that wham block right there. Springs him. That allows Lipke to pick up big yardage. Well, you called him the best offensive line in the FCS. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Did you believe me? Did you think I was lying to you? You know, the one thing is, early in the year, they weren't quite playing as well as they expected. Here's a straight-ahead run and another big game, this time Williams. And where are they running the ball? Up the A-gap. They tell you it's A-gap power. That means they're going to run the ball behind the center in between the guards, and we're seeing them show that. You don't know which direction it's coming, but you know it's coming. And until you can defend that, then North Dakota State will absolutely manhandle you. Already 105 rush yards in the first quarter for the Bison. Final minute of quarter number one. Lipke in the backfield takes a handoff. And he is just carrying defenders with him. He gets the first down. And, and this is no surprise. And this is where the Bison can be born at times. You talk to the other team, they say, well, number 44 is in the backfield in high position. He's going to get the football, but you still can't stop. I mean, that's giving you a head start, saying, okay, Lipke's in the game. He's in the backfield. You can crowd the box if you want to. Stop it. But this offensive line and his power running game, too much to deal with right now for Montana State. In a way, it's sort of the theme of this dynasty. They swing one out quickly to Watson, and there's the burst. <laughs> Who knows? He might have gotten to the end zone if not for that slip. It's a gain of eight, maybe nine. Uh, they call him Scoot for a reason. Family nickname for him was Scoot, Scooter, and you saw him turn on the Jets in a hurry. Explosive speed. What a phenomenal football talent. It's a long way from Tampa to Fargo, but he has thrived with the Bison who are looking for FCS championship number nine here today in Frisco. End of quarter number one. They've got a 7 nothing lead. Well, the big story so far as we start quarter number two in Frisco, Texas, this FCS championship game, the young star Tommy Mallott hurt on the Bobcats' first drive of the game. Tucker Robig's actually made some nice plays. The backup quarterback coming in. The ground game for North Dakota State has been unstoppable on the Bison as we start quarter number two. Have first or second down and short. Lipke untouched his second touchdown. Let's repeat the scouting report. When Hunter Lipke's in I formation, he's going to get the football. But the offensive line does such a great job. And you see the All-American linebacker, Troy Anderson, over-pursues. Lipke with one cut gets into the end zone untouched. Bison. Up early. Seven plays, 74 yards after an 11-play, 80-yard drive when they first had it. And right now, that ground game just looks to be unstoppable for North Dakota State. The guy who was the star in the semifinal win against GMU. The North Dakota State coaches almost told us, you know, we, we kind of hit him this year. We didn't use him a lot. We got criticized for that a little bit. It's time to unveil the secret weapon. Hunter Lipke has been great. Well, secret weapon, but when I talk to the defensive coordinator, Freddie Jones, Freddie Banks from Montana State, he knew Lipke was a key guy component to it, but it always goes down to that toughness. You know, when you talk to Matt Entz about North Dakota State Bison football, he said, we owe it to this program to always have the best offensive line in FCS football for the next 50 years. That's what they're built on, and they build the pieces around it. And when you add a talent like Lipke, 6'1", 240-pound fullback with moves like a running back, you can see why the Bison have so much success. Yeah. And Montana State's had two good drives already in this game, but have been stopped on third down both times, right in that sort of no man's land of long field goal, go for it punt with Malat healthy. They probably would have gone for it both times, and instead they've come away with nothing. So they are in a big hole in this championship game. Another impressive sight it is every year to see the Bison take over Frisco, Texas. A lot, of their, a lot of their fans, Jay, book the trip here before the season even starts. They are a very confident group, and why not? Short kickoff, fair catch. So if you're just joining us, the true freshman from Butte, who's become such a sensation, has led Montana State to this championship game on a nice run. That right ankle got twisted. 
And he clearly was hurting. He's been in the injury tent for a long time. They've taped it up. He's been trying to trying to work it out. Let's go down to Stormy for an update on Tommy. Well, Tommy now has the blue hat and headset on, but he's been doing everything he possibly could to get back involved in this game, whether it was doing drills, cutting, getting on the bike, pacing the sideline, but obviously not in there right now, but he's been the number one support system on the sideline as well. After Rovid came off on the last drive, he was supporting him, hyping him up, saying let's go to everybody down here, which doesn't surprise me at least one bit based on what the coaches have told us about him this his emotional maturity and intelligence, guys. Yeah, this is what Stormy's talking about. Quarterback. I mean, quarterback, you have to be a leader. You have to understand the game, and it's bigger than you. It's about the team and the program. And young man's just a freshman, but mature beyond his years. Second down and seven. Afonso straight ahead. It'll be third down. It's a tough guy state, Montana. And Tommy Malat comes from the tough guy town in the tough guy state. Butte. They call it Butte America up there in Montana. And so you know that he's really hurting if he's not on the field. He was compromised. Now third and four. And Tucker Rovig capable. But the game plan changes with him. It's a different skill set. Takes the snap and throws. That'll be complete. Nice pass on the left sideline to Jaden Smith for a Bobcats first down. And to give credit, you know, to the, the scheme they've got here, the throws are there, the plays are there. They've got the right play calls to have some success. They just need to make sure Rovit can go out there and execute to finish off a couple of these drives where they've moved the ball. All game. And they have five first downs. Bison have seven. North Dakota State thought that the Bobcats moved up front. First and ten. And the play fake. Rovig trying to get to the outside. Just well defended. And that's sort of what I'm talking about. Tommy Malott in the open field might be Montana State's fastest player. He has dominated in these playoffs, running the ball from the quarterback position. Rovig just he's just a different guy. Yeah, I think what you saw there was a difference in having a four, four, 40 yard dash quarterback and a four six guy. You know, doesn't seem like a lot, that little point two, but it's a huge difference on the football field. Play fake on second and eight. And that short completion out to Willie Patterson across the 40. It'll be third down. Another opportunity to get to third and manageable. Third and four yards. It gives you an opportunity to not have to become overly aggressive with your play selection. They've got Infonze in the back backfield. He can become a threat coming out in the passing game as well. Spreading them out right now. But they must protect the quarterback. They like to find one on one matchups and throw the 50 50 ball to Lance McClutchin if they can get that matchup. Rovig being pressured throws. Well, his receiver got shoved out of bounds. Now, Jaden Smith was on the North Dakota State sideline, nowhere to be found. It's fourth down. Bryce Layton, who has done a nice job as the punter for the Bobcats. Helped Montana State control field position in their semifinal win against South Dakota State. Punch for the first time. Fair catch right around the 25 yard line. That's where this powerful run game of the Bison will take over again. North Dakota State leading 14 0. For Georgia, can it be different than the SEC championship? You know, you almost feel like Alabama's like North Dakota State. It's going to be hard to go against Alabama in a national championship with Saban. Nice run stop by Daniel Hardy and the Bobcats. There is a real parallel, I think, between North Dakota State and Alabama and what they do at their respective levels. The SEC championship was not much of a contest. 
they dominate. And the bigger the game, the more relaxed they play, they start to inflict their will on you. That's what Alabama does. Bryce Young, phenomenal year, Heisman Trophy. But Georgia, you, you got to say, hey, did you learn something? It's all about everybody's going to have a loss. How do you rebound from that loss? And I will give credit to the Bulldogs. They look very impressive in their playoff victory. Second down and long, and they run straight ahead and squirting through. Kobe Johnson, there he goes. Johnson with Watson leading the way. Touchdown, 76 yards. Wow. During the break, we said this was the most important defensive series that Montana State was going to face, and they failed. I mean, this right here, they have an opportunity to bottle them up. They lose track of where the ball carry is. Callahan O'Reilly could not spot Johnson, and Kobe Johnson does the rest with Watson acting as an escort to the end zone. That offensive line just, good. <laughs> just dominating so far. Extra point is up and good. 195 rushing yards already for North Dakota State. We got 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. Kobe Johnson, 76 yards and a three score Bison lead. Why do we compare North Dakota State and Alabama? I mean, the Bison have built a true dynasty, eight FCS titles since 2011. They played in eight of these games before today. They've won all eight of them. Craig Bowles sort of got them started with three of those titles, went to Wyoming. Chris Kleiman did a great job. He won four championships in Fargo. And he goes to Kansas State. Now Matt Entz has taken over looking for his second. He won his first in 2019 with Trey Lance alongside. It is a dynasty. Yeah, one of the things you look at it, the different coaching styles that they had. I remember when Craig Bowl was emerging with that program. They had a quarterback named Brock Jensen, who was a tough grind home guy. And then they added the star power, the Trey Lance, the Carson Wentz, guys of that nature. And one thing is a constant. That offensive line has been great, and the fan base is tremendous. They expect to win championships in Fargo. Sumner returning this kick outside the 25. The return game's been pretty good for the Bobcats so far. Let's go down to Stormy. Well, Dave, when you say their fans expect it, they certainly do. A number of them get their tickets and flights to Frisco in August. But as a team, they intentionally don't talk about their former championships here. Head coach Matt Henson, they don't let the players wear national championship clothing in the weight room or in the facility. They don't dwell on the past. The focus is always forward and to next year and about this year's opportunity to advance the program. Uh, you know, Stormy, they always say that, but I think deep down, you have to expect to go there. You don't want to be that team that did not win the championship. Rovig across the middle, and it's intercepted. Dawson Weber's having a big game, and that's a Bobcats turnover. It's all Bison right now. And this throw just looks like it gets away from him here. Fakes the pitch and supposed to get and just misfires. Great job by Dawson Weber. Reading the keys. And things just not going well for Montana State in this first half. And Tucker Rovin has to find a way to get it together to give his team a chance to try and get back in this football game. We did get a penalty. And I'm assuming it's some sort of celebration penalty. Good officiating crew here this afternoon for this championship game led by the referee Nolan Dumas. We also have Steve Shaw with us here in the booth, our rules expert. So they're talking about this down on the field, Steve. Yeah, they're really looking at the numbers here. They're trying to get help to get all the numbers of a group of players. The ruling to the on the field was an interception after the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number two, defense. It's a 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot. The first down at 10, North Dakota State. That is number two, first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. So they went with the player that was leading it. There was a whole group that went down there. Very difficult to pick up all the numbers, so they went with the leader. That's why I want to know, Steve, if I, if I get the interception, I run down to the end zone. I'm not responsible for who comes with me. 
Well, it, it, it could have been on that entire group, yes. but that's difficult to get all those numbers sometimes. But now if number two gets another unsportsmanlike penalty, then he is ejected from the game. Yeah, that'd be tough one. He was the guy that got the interception, so nitpicking a little bit, but tough one. 21 to nothing. The ground game has been unstoppable. That's Lipke, who's already got two rushing touchdowns. He hadn't done that all season. And he's had two rushing touchdowns in the first half here today. I, it's probably the wrong term to call him a secret weapon because he's not a secret. We know he's one of their very best players. But sometimes, I think North Dakota State fans this year felt like a little underutilized. They spread the ball around so judiciously, so d democratically in this offense. Sometimes I think they want, let's get the ball to number 44 a little more. And, and you know, you don't say this normally with a running back particularly somebody like him but you have to have his load management he's not running away from contact so you don't need him getting 25 power carries a game will throw out into the flat what a catch by Kobe Johnson who had the great touchdown run that was a spectacular catch for a short game you know what's missing right here we talk about Lipke and everything else but running back by committee but the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield that was a tremendous catch by Kobe Johnson that ball easy could have been batted in the air and would have been an interception by Eric Zambrano number one who was in the vicinity good play by Kobe Johnson third down's been no problem for NDSU in this first half they give it to Lipke Lipke will go down this time that was a good tackle from the Bobcats O'Reilly I think been one of the standouts in the first half for Montana State. Well, you see number 47 with the pursuit angle. He lost Kobe Johnson earlier, but this time realizes he has to have the momentum, cannot let forward progress get to the first down yardage. And finally, Montana State defense makes a stop and forces a punt. I'm a little surprised they're punting the ball away on fourth and two from midfield, but up three touchdowns. Don't want to give, I guess, Montana State any reason to have some hope, and their defense has been so good. So the Bobcats' offense will come back on the field. Meanwhile, we've got to remind you our Week 18 NFL doubleheader is coming up later today. We got two games for you on ESPN: Chief Broncos at 4:15 Eastern, then Cowboys Eagles at 8 Eastern tonight on ABC, ESPN, ESPN Plus, ESPN Deportes. Our NFL countdown coverage begins at 3 Eastern noon Pacific. So the offense for Montana State back on the field without their young star, true freshman quarterback, Tommy Malott, ankle injury on the first series of the game. It's changed this whole championship game. Yeah, they lose speed in the pocket. The ability to have that little it factor right there in the quarterback backup, Tucker Rovix, come in and Completed a couple throws, but it's just such a different offensive mindset when you've got a 6'5", more of a pocket passer compared to Malat, who's the six-foot running quarterback first. You know, the, the, the whole story of the offense this year for Montana State, it was not, they, their, their team was led by defense. They had a great defensive year. The offense was inconsistent, and that led to the quarterback change leading into the playoffs. And their offense has been so much better in the three playoff games with Malat leading the way. And off, and that's Sumner. Just nowhere to go. And, and I think we're seeing what a difference Malat has made. Yeah. You know, the offense, although they were 9-2 and two before Malat was a starter, offense was always suspect. He comes take over, and all of a sudden the offense is potent. And they're winning games, putting more points on the board. Because they, they really, you see that graphic there. They, they've won their playoff games by two touchdowns plus all three of them. Now, movement along the right side of the line as Rovig was trying to make a Ball call. Start, number 72, offense, five yard penalty, still third down. TJ Session, the right tackle. I tell you, Brent Vegan just wants this first half to be over with so he can get in the locker room and try and regroup, come up with another game plan. Be careful right here. This is dangerous territory. An incomplete pass is not the worst thing that can happen to you right now if you're Montana State. Rovig will throw, and it is going to be caught. How about that? Wow. <laughs> Lance McCutcheon, the big play guy for a first down. 
Who saw this coming here? A little bit too soft on the outside. You have to reroute the wide receiver. You cannot, that's Destin Talbert, who we're good to see back in the game, but you have to reroute the wide receiver. You cannot give him a free release. Big play for the Bobcats. Now Rovig is going to run on first down. Goes down. But got positive yardage, and now a North Dakota State player is hurting. That's their star safety, first team All American, Michael Tutsi, who's been a huge part of this program. Do you feel like you're finally starting to see a little life, a little energy ever since the Malat injury coming from Montana State with that big completion? Yeah, they need it. Hopefully, Tutsi's okay. We'll step aside. Still in the first half of this FCS championship game. With a quarterback injury for Montana State in this first half, it's been all by Zip. Coming up at halftime, championship game media day. Why Georgia and Alabama each can feel confident heading into the national championship game on Monday night. I think it's Joe Tess and Jesse Palmer and Roman Harper who are going to be with you at halftime. No Tommy Malott for the Bobcats. So Tucker Rovey played a lot of football for Montana State. Bobcats have not been shut out in the first half all year. Trying to get down the field and put some points on the board before halftime here today. A consecutive good plays for the Bobcat offense. The third down conversion and picked up five yards on first down, showing some signs of life, and the crowd is trying to get behind them. Defonse straight ahead. Man, he is a tough, tough running back. It was amazing during the break. Montana State fans were making so much noise. Nothing's gone right for them. Their first championship game since 1984. The folks from Montana are so happy to be here. And they're trying. Yeah, you, you couldn't tell they were down by 21 points. They're trying to encourage their, their boys out there on the field, showing some fight now, some signs of life. They're starting to get some consecutive plays. Maybe the team is feeding off the energy brought by the Bobcat fan base. Alfonso got just enough for a Bobcat first down. Near midfield. Play clock all the way down to one. Play fake. And down the left sideline, it is incomplete. Knocked away at the last moment. I think that was Destin Talbert, who this would not qualify as his most spectacular play of the playoffs, but it's still pretty good. And maybe McCutcheon just dropped it. The nicely thrown ball from Rovick. Give credit. This is the ball where you want your big wide receiver to come up to him, hit him in that left bicep. Talbert able to disrupt just enough to force the incompletion. But you got to watch McCutcheon, the six foot three inch, 200 pound senior out of Bozeman, Montana. He had 1,100 receiving yards this year for a team that didn't throw the ball that much. Another play fake. They're going down the sideline again. And this one is knocked away incomplete. More good coverage, and McCutcheon had another opportunity. This time, Montana State fans thought there should have been a flag. When they get one on one matchups, they believe in going for it. They think they've got a chance of converting. Not much content. You got to make that catch. This is a championship. You're a senior. This is a championship game. You've got a backup quarterback there. I don't need you to be average. I need you to be above average to great. You're the go-to wide receiver. Consecutive plays, we thought he had an opportunity to make a big play. Not able to convert. Got to make one of those. Down 21 nothing. It's third and 10. Pressure comes. Rovig throws, and it's incomplete. Stewart, the intended receiver, fourth down. And I like that play call by the defense of North Dakota State. Quarterback starting to get into a rhythm. He's a backup. Bring a blitz. See if he knows his protection. And I think by the pressure coming, that forced Rovit to get rid of that ball quicker. He had a nice pocket there, but a little bit antsy, got rid of it quick, incompletion, forced the punt. Well, those two plays down the field, oh, those were opportunities. Absolutely. Nicely thrown passes, but no help from the supporting cast. Fair catch. And a little bobble there by Jaden Price at about the 15 yard line, 37 yards. But the Bison run game, you said it right at the top. It's been awesome. Yeah, running back by committee. You know, they want to run the ball up the middle. You saw Lipke there showing the power. He's had a tremendous first half. You know he's going to get the ball, but how about this? They give it to Kobe Johnson. 
play design to be run up the A gap, bounce outside, gets it to the end zone for a huge play that was really a dagger in the heart of the defense for Montana State. Here come the herd. There they are. That offensive line led by Cordell Volson, but they got a lot of studs up front. And it, it's almost unfair. You know, when I go through the practice and the walkthrough, this is the biggest FCS football team I've seen. I mean, they are big like FBS teams. You talk about Cordell Volson. He's your right tackle. He's 6'7", 313 pounds. And then you go to the left side with Cody Ma. He's 6'6", 301. Those are your tackles. Those are your bookends. I mean, big number 70 with the red air flowing. Cody Mock, you're talking about. They also told us, oh, as an aside, you know, he's big, he's strong, he's tough. He's missing his two front teeth. <laughs> missing his two front teeth. A former tight end that they bulked up to become a dominating left tackle. Patterson in the game at quarterback, and he will keep it. Left side uses the stiff arm. Penalty flag thrown. Face mask, offensive face mask. Seemed to me like Quincy Patterson grabbed the defenders coming up to make the tackle and held on to the face mask. The offensive player is allowed to put his hand on the mask. He can't grasp, twist, and turn. So he's got it. And he's and he twisting and turning. Personal foul, face mask, number two, offense. That penalty's half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Replay second down. All right, so repeat that again, Steve. So the offensive player is allowed to put his hand on the mask and push. Yep. But if he grasps, twist, and turn, which you see there, he's pulling that thing down. That's a good call. That's an offensive face mask. I, I agree with that right there. Dang, it's all about player safety. You have to protect the defensive players as well. Quincy Patterson there with a little tug and twist. So now second and 12. And Miller back in. They throw the pass, get a block on the outside, and get some positive yards, and then a collision on the sideline. Man, hopefully everybody's all right over there. And that play should not have had the success it had, but Erickson Brown on the cornerback took an inside pursuit angle, gave up outside contain, allowed them to make it a little bit more third and manageable. Quarterback out. Change. Patterson back in. Interesting how they're doing that. I think they're trying to set him up right now. You think Patterson's coming in, they're going to run the football with him there? Don't be surprised. They do a little two-man RPO game with the pass option as well. Patterson instead straight ahead. Power football still going, and he's going to get the first down. <laughs> Man, so hard to bring down. And that offensive line, once again, I mean, they have the courage to say, you know what, it's third and six. We can get behind the horses up front, add a 250-pound quarterback to go with a 240-pound hybrid back in Lipke and just move the pile the old-fashioned way. Four or five on third down. And you're right. That was, that was third and six. No problem. Just run the ball. Fully confident they're going to get it. Williams in the backfield and he slipped so Miller slips Montana State got a little help from the turf Daniel Hardy ended up helping make the play there a loss of a couple yards it looked like a little bit of a, uh, not miscommunication but they slipped and we talked about the field conditions are deteriorating this is a natural grass surface here it's been misty and there are just clogs of dirt piles all over this field we've seen a lot of players lose their footing and that's why North Dakota State probably has the lead because they don't try to run wide they try and run in between the tackles less cutting involved Miller scrambling and now he's going to be tackled Hardy who piled up the sack numbers this year has had a pretty quiet first tap that won't go as a sack but still a good play you need to call his name because believe it or not, when you talk about Montana State, their scouting report, the strength of this team is their defensive line. Amandre Williams, Daniel Hardy, Chase Benson. But we have not called their names today because the Bison offensive line has been winning those battles. Third and long. Final two minutes of this first half.
Miller steps up. He's going to throw, and he's got his man complete for another conversion on third down. That's Babbage, the tight end. Yep. And the offensive line going to have his protection enough time for a good job with pocket presence to step up, keep his head and vision downfield, and find Babbage come open late for another third down conversion. Babbage has done a nice job sort of stepping in. Noah Jindorf is a very good receiving tight end who's got a chance to play in the NFL. Got hurt late in the year. He's out for the rest of this year. He's going to come back and play another year in Fargo. They're going to pitch it back to Miller from Lipke. He throws. Everybody's slipping and incomplete. Well, Josh Stuffel, another one of those tight ends. Let you know how, how big they are. Stuffman is 6'4", 245 pounds. He's the smallest tight end they have. So you talk about losing Gindorf, who's 6'6", 260. Then you bring in Babbitt, who's 6'6", 255. Who's had an impact in Stuffel, the smaller tight end. But it's a big football team in America. I'm telling you, if you've never seen the Bison play before and in person, they're even more impressive. Patterson in at quarterback. He'll fake it with Lipke leading the way as a blocker. Man, he can do it all. You'll see Lipke come across the formation, number 44. Once he gets his hands on you right there, the quarterback has the option to go inside or outside. Trey Webb, number two, the safety for Montana State, kind of got out of the way of Quincy Patterson. Would not be shocked if you saw some form of that play again with the success they had. So 58 rush yards for Patterson. Now 219 first half rushing yards for NDSU. Here comes Lipke. Patterson with more blocks. There goes Patterson. Quincy Patterson inside the 30. Montana State just can't stop it. Yeah, where are the linebackers? They're doing run stuffing blitzes, and they're not accounting for the quarterback in the running game. Where are the linebackers? You're relying on your safeties and secondary defenders to make tackles 10 yards downfield. Miscommunication, or better yet, tremendous execution by the offensive line of North Dakota State. Now, Troy Anderson, one of the all-time, true all-time great Montana State players. Having a hard time making an impact on this game. Miller fakes the run. Then was going to throw. Didn't have anybody open. He buys some time. There's Sanderson. With the <laughs> what you say? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Troy. <laughs> there you are. He heard you talking about him there and came over and delivered a wow out of frustration there. You see, he got there in a hurry, but I really like Troy Anderson. First charge coming Look at this. He half. comes in there like North a Dakota missile. 6'4, 235 pound linebacker. They say he is the fastest person on this Montana State football team. Bobcats have not had a player drafted since 2016. It's been a while. He's going. That streak is, is <laughs> going to end. He's going to be drafted. Now they've stopped play here, and I believe they're taking a look at this for a potential targeting we got Steve Shaw in the booth with us the national coordinator of officials our rules analyst here today for this FCS championship game Steve what'd you think so what you're looking at is the receiver the first thing you have to find out is the receiver defenseless and he's turning it upfield and if he's not defenseless then it would only be a crown of the helmet hit um, if you deemed him defenseless you know there you could see it as targeting so what replays looking at is do they feel like this player transitioned to a runner and if he transitioned to a runner clearly this is not well, and you know and the football player in me says Troy Anderson 6'4 235 Roger Nelson is 5'8 170 you have to go low to make contact you have to I thought he did a good job of keeping his head up and running through the tackle Well, it is. It's a big question. Do you think that the the receiver runner was defenseless or not? 
And that may ultimately be the toughest part of making this call. It is, and, and what the rule book says is when in question, we make them defenseless. The question you're looking at is you see the receiver turn up field. Can he defend himself? And he's really in that transition of he's starting to lower his body to defend himself. Um, so this is a tough one for the replay official. If you made him defenseless, it could be targeting. But, you know, I think here, well, we'll see what replay does with it. But, you know, the question is now, can he defend himself? He's trying, to, uh, he's trying to come through with a shoulder. I think Troy Anderson tried to come through with a shoulder, had to lower his pad level to make contact. What do you see? I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, I think that, you know, this is not classical targeting in any aspect. But if you made him defense, let's see what the referee has. Second down. So Bravo. no targeting. I think that was the right call. You know, it's a difficult play, but you really didn't see a launch or an attack. So I think this is a good job by the replay official. Take a look at it and no target. Well, there's no place for sentiment. I mean, the replay officials aren't allowed to use emotion or sentiment. That would be a truly lousy way for the career of one of the all-time greats to come to an end. So. Yeah. Personally, I'm glad it's not. Wow, yeah, I didn't even think about that. That close to having his career in right there, yeah, on a football play. I mean, I'm a tall guy. I know what it's like to get leverage and have to drop your shoulder pad level. Let's see if he has a couple more plays like that in him. A guy who's been a star running back, an All-American quarterback, a defensive player of the year linebacker in his Montana State career. Straight ahead run for the quarterback Cam Miller. Well, the Bison get a first down. They're inside the 20 on the move at the end of this first half. Under a minute to go. With all their timeouts, so the, the, the clock should not be a factor here. What a first half performance for Lipke for North Dakota State. I mean, they, they just can't tackle him. Yeah, call a timeout right now, maybe after picking up another successful run. Running behind Jalen Sundell. And those guards, Nash Jensen, Jake Kubis, can't say enough about this. You know the ball's coming between the guards, but they move the pile and keep the legs going forward, lean, a load to bring down. This is a rushing clinic on this play by North Dakota State. On this play and just about every play that they've run in the first half. I mean, even this, you don't call this two-minute offense. It's like five-minute offense. 13 plays. They've already gone 79 yards. And for years, what they've always done is they make the little things look easy. If it's third and two, you always knew they were going to convert. If it's fourth and one, they always convert. They don't hurt themselves. But I go back to that opening series. When they overcame third and long with some key passes to keep that drive alive and to take the lead early, he had the feeling it was kind of the bison type of day. But second and two, Miller, the quarterback, leaves the backfield. They direct snap it to Lipke. Lipke, touchdown, his third of this championship game. When Hunter Lipke's in the game, in the I formation position, the A position, they get him the football. And this time, you've got two lead blockers there. Shows the patience, and now it's all about shoulder pad level and the will to get into the end zone. And, oh, yeah, give me a little buck kick. I don't know what that was, but he's had celebration. Three, he's had three different. He worked on his celebration game because he scored three <laughs> touchdowns already, and he's had three different celebrations. A kid who doesn't say much, but obviously has a passion for the game. Well, I mean, nice patient there. Then gets the the great runners are going to snip that end zone. Now, somebody from the Bison Nation, tell me what is this right here? <laughs> I'm a city boy. I don't know, but I bet you somebody out there in Fargo can give me a definition of what that was. Uh, they'll be imitating that as soon as they get back home. And then you see the youngsters like that kind of goes back to what Cordell Volson told us. Growing up his whole life, I always wanted to be nothing but a bison for North Dakota State. They breed them up there, and that's part of North Dakota. And Lipke, who's from a small town in Wisconsin, was a state champion wrestler, was a center fielder, all-state baseball player, football player, sort of do-everything kid, crossed over into North Dakota to play for North Dakota State, and has become a star.
So another one of these sort of design shorter kickoffs and Sumner is going to return. With a half minute now less to go in the first half a first half that has been dominated by North Dakota State and unfortunately for Montana State fans they must be having some flashbacks because the last two meetings in the playoffs really the last three meetings but the last two times Montana State was in the playoffs they got walloped in 2018 it was a little closer than the score indicated in 2019 still a lopsided final score it's happening again here today yeah in this case you have to say what if there'll be a big asterisk next to this one because if a lot would have stayed healthy you have to think this game would be a lot more competitive than what we've seen I mean I have no doubt there'd be some Look points out. on the board almost intercepted by Destin Talbert who became a hero after the semifinal clinching interception against JMU almost had one here in the championship game and, and it's time to take a knee and get to the locker room if you're Montana State 21 seconds left you're down by 28 I think you need to regroup and find a way to motivate this team a little bit. I wouldn't be in a hurry to throw the ball right now. I want to kind of take my chances in the second half. I think I'm with you. Even though they're down four touchdowns, they swing that one out for a very short gain to Elijah Elliott out of the backfield. And, you know, let's not underestimate the job that Brent Vegan has done there. I thought he was a strong candidate to be a national coach of the year. First year coach of the Bobcats, first full year. But, and, but, but that look sort of says it all I don't about care. how today's going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those days, but opening loss to Wyoming and then lost to Montana. But I think the job he did after they lost the last game of the season to their in-state rival Montana, able to have the run that they had to make it here to Frisco. Is impressive. Well, you mentioned it the guts to make a quarterback change leading into the playoffs. Rovig kind of heaves one up incomplete with pressure on. It's fourth down with 12 seconds to go until halftime. I mean, that, I know Tommy Milan had impressed everybody all year. He got some chances to play Wildcat quarterback, had been a great practice player. It's still, you're going into the playoffs as the number eight overall seed with a bye earned, and you still decide we got to make this quarterback change. That takes some courage. Yeah, he's a better man than me because <laughs> I don't think I do. would have done it. Yeah, it's kind of almost hard to justify. I mean, you're a national seed in the postseason, one of the top eight teams in the country, and you're going to change your quarterback to go with a true freshman. Let you know he had a good pulse for this team. Yeah, and he, he was vindicated right away. I mean, obviously, it was the right move. Another Montana State punt with six seconds to go until halftime. And the what if game for the Bobcats. Tommy Malaja, they, they've tried everything. He was in the injury tent for a long time. He was running up and down. He was on the bike. We heard Stormy tell us all the things he was trying to do to see if he could get that right ankle loose. Just couldn't do it. You know, I saw in the lobby of the hotel that came by talking about quarterbacks at Montana State, and I did not know he was a quarterback there. Dennis Erickson, former head coach for the Canes, he flew in town. That's how badly. These Bobcat fans have been waiting to get this opportunity. So many former players here, and you know they're discouraged. It is tough going up against the Bison dynasty. Can Brent Reed, Vegan, and group regroup in the halftime locker room? Not going to be easy. Down 28 nothing, and North Dakota State gets the ball when we start the second half. First, let's go down to Stormy. Well, Coach Hart described a much better start for your group. What's allowed them to dictate play on both sides? Well, we've been able to run the football pretty effectively. We've been able to get Quincy in the run game with our quarterbacks. Camps made some big hits. Uh, as far as you know, just being efficient with the football right now, and then defensively, we've been able to get some big stops. A little frustrating. You know, we missed a third down. Uh, conversion down here, a third and short. We gave up a big third long and a silly penalty, but otherwise we're playing a relatively clean game right now. I know the mission isn't accomplished just yet. Yeah, no. How do you maintain that edge in the next half? We'll, we'll, we'll find a way. You know, that, that's, a, that's a motivated group in that locker room, and so I don't think there'll be a problem with the energy coming out in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Dave. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Stormy. I don't doubt that. They will find a way to keep the edge. Two quarters away from another FCS championship. Hunter Lipke and company have been dominant after the break. Joe Roman and Jesse have the studio halftime report.
All right, we come back ready to start the second half, and the powerhouse Bison of North Dakota State. What a performance in the first half. The quarterback injury for the Bobcats, obviously a big part of the story, but the rushing attack in particular, Jay, for North Dakota State was so impressive. Yeah, you really can't take anything away from them. Even though Montana State does not have the ability to score points, there would have been a track meet, and the North, North Dakota State offense came out on fire, established dominance on the line of scrimmage, ran the football effectively when needed. Impressive performance for Matt and squads. Uh, Tommy Malat's injury on the very first series of the game. The freshman who transformed the Montana State offense and his ankle. He's got the helmet on, but you and I just watched him for a few minutes on the sideline. I think it's unlikely we're going to see him back in the game. Yeah, you have to think they have to protect him. And I don't think he can defend himself out there on the football field with his style of play. So I would be shocked if we saw him touch the field in the second half, which is tough for the Bobcats. Kickoff's going to go out of bounds, so that will draw a penalty flag on the kickoff. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The ball be played. Dave Fleming, Jay Walker, Stormy Bond, and Tony, great to have you back with us here. I, you know, whatever you think about the quarterback injury and how that impacted Montana State, I, it's just so impressive. Every time the Bison are here in this spot in the biggest games, they play like this. Yeah, I think we see why they're undefeated, undefeated when they come down here to Frisco, Texas. Dominant. They play better the bigger the stage or platform that they're on. It's been very impressive. I think America's seeing why North Dakota State has won those eight FCS national championships, and they're on their way to a ninth. They're using both quarterbacks, they're using their fullbacks, their running backs. The whole playbook has been there, and it's all been successful. Quincy Patterson on the first play from scrimmage of this second half. Let's go down to Stormy. Well, Dave, Montana State head coach Brent Fegan talked to me during the break, and he said, yes, we faced a lot of adversity losing Tommy, but we are not going to lay down. We need to get some stops, and defensively, he said, we've relied on this group all season long. They weren't themselves in this first half, and we need to see them turn it around. So that's what he's hoping for, a better defensive effort, obviously. That 268 yards on the ground and four touchdowns was not cutting it for that group. For a defense statistically that's been outstanding. Lipke got dragged down right before he got to the first down mark by Troy Anderson. I mean, how big is this? And we heard Stormy give you the numbers. Almost 270 yards rushing in the first half. Montana State average giving up 108 yards rushing per game for the whole game. So they're shell-shocked. They're not used to being pushed around like this. Particularly a guy like Troy Anderson had two tackles in the first half. Two. That's not Montana State football. No, I mean, they've been even better that rush defense you're talking about in the playoffs. Miller's going to push it ahead. And behind those big boys, no problem getting a yard. It's first down NDSU. And a simple play like that is why you have to like North Dakota State. Quarterback sneak, everybody knows it's coming. You need a yard. They lean forward, they pick up three. They make it look easy where we've seen other teams, particularly in college football, struggle with a quarterback sneak. I mean, it, it frustrates me every time a spread offense runs shotgun. a shotgun play. <laughs> it's third and six inches, and you snap the ball back five. I just, I'll never understand that one. Look at this formation. You think they want to play some smash mouth football? I believe they do. They've been doing it for a decade, for several decades. Handoff. That's Kobe Johnson had a long touchdown run. He breaks a tackle of Troy Anderson. Man, he's good too. Lipke and Patterson and Miller and Williams. But don't forget about yeah, Kobe yeah. Johnson. Yeah, Kobe Johnson the speed back, but a great job by Tameric Williams, the other running back in the backfield, number 22. You'll see him come across the lead blocker. Once he forces Anderson to take that shuffle step, that allows Johnson to get outside to pick up big yardage. Two rushes, 94 yards. <laughs> Look at that average. He's saying, give me the ball a little more. Got now, him. a misdirection play. Wide open, Babbage, the tight end. Touchdown. <laughs> 35 yards. Unstoppable. 
you pay attention so much to the running game. Nobody even saw Babbage come across the formation. He started off lined up to the right, came across with a drag route wide open, focusing so much on the run, they were able to sneak the tight end across the formation. Now you talked about how big their line is, their tight ends. Well, that's a tight end who's a big dude who can move a little too. Took him five plays to add to their lead. Well, the cup snake's already looking pretty impressive. I have a feeling there are going to be some more beverages <laughs> consumed on the North Dakota State side with what's going on in this FCS championship game. Just stunning. 35 nothing for the powerhouse Bison, and they have been so impressive. And that's a tradition there. Let's talk of the international. The first time I saw a cup snake, uh -huh. Winnipeg. Winnipeg, the Winnipeg. Blue Bombers, they had, they do it all the way up the stadium, then North Dakota brings it there, then we saw some more teams bring it more stateside. I see the Cup Snake, I think Wrigley Field, personally. Okay. Fair catch on the kickoff. But, but let's take a look at why they're able to get so wide open here. So on this play here, Babbage is going to line up, but take a look at Callahan O'Reilly. He's the inside linebacker. You don't allow somebody to cross your face and not wonder or know where he's going to. He looks in the backfield, allows Babbage to come right across his face. You have to say, O'Reilly, what are you looking at? He's crossing your face for a reason. He's not going to block the coach. He's going to get open in the passing game or to lay a block. Mental error there, the eyes not being where they're supposed to be. And very unusual for a good player, second team all-conference player, Isaiah Fonse. Give him credit. He's been banged up. He missed the semifinal game. Playing here today and playing tough despite not being 100%. And that's what you say. We know he's not 100% now, and then they lose their starting quarterback there. So he's showing you the toughness that allowed him to rush for 1,500 yards during the season. You have to think this whole Montana State team is just stunned. The way the game started, they looked ready to play. First play from scrimmage was a nice game. They were moving down the field. And their sensational young quarterback got hurt, and the whole game changed on one play. And now this is the time where, you know, you want that mental toughness. We know there's a hurdle with Montana State having their season ended by North Dakota State. Still early in this game. If you get a score with some momentum and a turnover, you can try to force it. But right now, they have to show that they have the ability to put some points on the board so the defense doesn't lose faith in them. Devonse. Not a lot of running room on first down. And the chances of coming back and winning this game are obviously minuscule. But Stormy told us she talked to Brent Vegan, the head coach of Montana State, and he's looking for his team to find a way to compete in this second half. You can understand, though, as a player, you know, all these expectations coming in, championship dreams, and then the game's going this way. Young men out there. Got to keep him motivated. How about the question she asked Coach Matt Entz? You know, what do you do to keep your team motivated? There's that, that sort of fake run pass play that we saw early. Derek Snell, the tight end, with the catch and run for 17 yards. They opened the game with this play when they had him a lot of quarterback here. You think that you're going to run? Little slip pass to the tight end. Derek Snell, middle of the field. Big game for the Bobcats. Hard play to defend. Especially if you're a run first offense, which is what Montana State is. On first down, that throw is low. Can't, can't do that. Let me give you a little football. Okay. Give you a little football. What does Montana State do well? They run the football. They come in here, they want to run the ball 40 times. Running teams have to win on first down. So you get the big completion. Now you have to establish you can run the football. Run the ball. Worst thing a running team can do is have an incomplete pass on first down because they're not built for second long, third and long. So I'm just going to make that question mark there. Establish you can run the football if you're a running team. Don't start getting into a pass-happy offense when it's not your style. Second and 10, quarterback run play. And Rovig gets wrestled down after a gain of five. See, I, I love that play on first down because then we'd be looking at second and five. Now we're looking at third five. You know there's a difference there. However, they may be thinking it's four down territory when you're down by this score right here. I would hope so. <laughs> I, if it's ever going to be four down territory, it's now. This has been the part of the field where they've struggled. Ifonse broke a tackle, lunges ahead, and didn't quite get there. A little short. Got to go for it. 
have to. You haven't been able to capitalize on drives all game, even though you've crossed midfield. Gut check time. Tighten up your chin strap. Downhill football. Alfonso didn't get the handoff. They throw it up. McCutcheon fights for the ball and comes down with it. Just kind of a heave ho on fourth and one. Why not? Yeah, you say why? Well, if, if you'd have given the ball to the running back, then he would not have gotten it. And Fonte would have been short. They just give a chance. One on one, they like their chances. And McCutcheon, who didn't make those big catches in the first half, comes up big here. So 24 yards to make it first and goal, Montana State. That's the first smile in a while on the Bobcat side. They've got Troy Anderson in at quarterback under center, and that was just beautifully defended by North Dakota State. That's an interesting wrinkle, and, and look, he's one of your all-time greats. He was a great running quarterback a couple of years ago when he was the starter and a third-team All-American for the full season. That lasted one play. Yeah, well, I'm showing you the athleticism. They tried to get, think about it, they tried to get their starting Mike linebacker on the edge for a jet sweep. Yeah. For a jet sweep. And talk about a pure football player. This is him. Freshman of the year as a running back. All-American quarterback 2018 rushed for 21 touchdowns now one of the best linebackers in college football Hand off if I'd say just nowhere to go nowhere third and goal Look for Eli him. Mostart big player in the middle really good player Look at that little extra pushing and shoving. Right, show some fight, baby. I have a feeling the message at the end of that play from the Bison side was, yeah, have you seen the scoreboard lately? Rovig play fake, jump ball incomplete. Man, his guy was there. McCutcheon was there. Yeah, he boxed him up well, had him squared up to elevate and make that catch. There would have been nothing at the defensive back. Jaden Price would have been able to do. I mean, this is how you body up right here. This is a good job. He's got him square. If that ball's thrown anywhere in the vicinity, back shoulder, that's a touchdown catch. But throw off target now brings up a field goal attempt. Short field goal. Montana State fans were not happy that the field goal team was coming out there. And I understand why you want to put some points on the board in a championship game. That field goal is up and good from 26 yards away. They're on the board, but it's still 35-3 Bison. This FCS championship game started promisingly for Montana State, the underdog team, but their true freshman quarterback got hurt on the first drive. He was obviously compromised. They tried, but they just could not get Tommy Malott good to go, and it might not have mattered because the North Dakota State offense has just been unstoppable on the ground through the air Lipke with three touchdowns in the first half he's been a star the power of North Dakota State's been on display Hunter Lipke three touchdowns early I don't think there's any doubt that Montana State would have more than three on the board with yep. their quarterback in there but whether they'd have enough against this powerhouse team, I don't know. Malad injured, Lipke, the three touchdowns. Six different rushers combining for 298 rush yards. We got seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. <laughs> and they're going to eclipse 300 yards rushing with so much more to play. This could be a 400-yard rushing day for the Bison. And Lipke, very impressed. Very impressed. We knew he was going to get the ball. Everybody knew it, but they have not been able to bring him down. He's in eye formation again. Look for him to get an opportunity to do some more damage. Usually he gets the ball when he's standing back there, and usually the defense can't stop it, even if they know it's coming. When you talk about how they distribute the ball, they have all those rush yards, now over 300. They don't have a 100-yard rusher. <laughs> 
you know, I, I, I tried to give you a little heads up in the, in the open. This is running back by committee behind the nation's best offensive line. Did you doubt your partner? It's a committee of 10. <laughs> if you include those big guys up front, which you should. And off Lipke again. This time strung out. Anderson there to wrestle him down. I got a packed January sports calendar. The NFL doubleheader later today. National championship game, of course, coming up on Monday. It's Chiefs, Broncos, Cowboys, Eagles today on ESPN and ABC. Georgia, Alabama on Monday. Now you got Real Madrid and Barcelona. The uh, semifinal of the Super Copa on Wednesday. And don't I, I can't dive too deep on that one particularly but all kinds of stuff all month long across our networks third and five Miller design quarterback run it looks like got knocked off balance and he got stopped short the defense coming up with the stop there anything can happen one of the few times we've seen North Dakota State not able to pick up a first down So with the clock moving, Daniel Hardy, who's playing his final game, he's been a great player for the Bobcats. An opportunity to get the ball back in pretty good field position if they can get a decent return. Who knows? Maybe give themselves a little bit of hope. They pressured the punt. It wasn't a great punt, and they will have good field position at about the 39-yard line. So the 34 yard punt. Can the Bobcats get another drive going? We'll find out after this. Can find it all. Montana State gets the ball back. Down big. Rovig, another one of those run pass plays. And the ball was dropped. And Trayton Pickering had it for a moment. And maybe it got knocked away incomplete. They've had success doing this in catchable ball. He has to secure that football. Not able to secure the football. Maybe a little slippery because of the rain that's picked up a little bit. But they've had success with that play. Something that they've obviously scouted out coming in this game and knew they have at their disposal. Yeah, their star wide receiver Lance McCutcheons missed a, a couple chances downfield to make big catches. That was a drop there. Second and ten. And a handoff. That is the straight ahead run for Lane Sumner. And gain of six out to the 45. The sophomore from Huntley, Montana. So many of these Montana State kids and North Dakota kids from small towns in those states are one of the most fun parts about getting ready for a game like this. Learning from those players, asking them about where they come from, those hometowns. Some amazing stories. And a huge amount of pride in both states. Afonso couldn't quite get there. Man, he got wrestled to the ground, so it's fourth and one. You know, and I like when we talk to the small cow kids, you know, my thing was, where was the closest fast food place? And when they say the answer is, oh, probably about 30 minutes away, just for some fast food, that lets you know you're, you're talking about the rural tier of America. Fourth and one. Fonse now comes alongside Rovig, the quarterback, who's going to throw on fourth and short. And he's going downfield. It's incomplete. Well, last time they had it, that's what they did on fourth and short. This time it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah head scratcher. They, they want to go to the one on one matchup, but they went where the wheel route is. But that's a lot of cushion that they were giving up on the outside by Dom Jones, number 10. He was willing to give him the short throw, but they went for the home run ball. and. Jones almost came away with the interception. I thought they had a better matchup on the left side of the field, one-on-one -on -one bumper run coverage with one safety high. It's been one of those days for Montana State. Defense for the Bison gets a stop. Rovig has gone cold. Now the drop was a big play on that series. But the uh, quarterback, Tucker Rovig, three for his last 12. Yikes. Not equipped to come from behind this Montana State team. Hand off, and that is to Merrick Williams, one of the hometown kids. Not a ton of players from the state of Texas in this game. Tamerick is from 
the Houston area, but he started his college career at SMU, not far at all from where we are here in Frisco. He was excited to come back. I mean, averaging seven yards a, game, a carry here today. I mean, this offensive line's a story. And you see the vision there. I think I think they're taught, you know, their running style. You have to teach people how to run in between those guards instead of bouncing off tackle like most runners like to do. Is when you get in trouble, get back to the inside and lean and pick up positive yardage. Second down and short, Lipke straight ahead for a North Dakota State first down. You talk about the kids from the small towns. The right tackle playing his 65th career game, Cordell Volson. We asked him about his hometown. He's from Balfour, North Dakota. So he said, all right, so how many folks are in Balfour, Cordell? He, he thought about it for a second. He said, uh, I think at last count it was 27. 27. <laughs> from a hometown of 27. I said, do you know them all? He goes, yeah, yeah, I know them all. Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget your little quick answer. Do you know them all? <laughs> he said he knew them all. And how about this? He went to a high school that had 300 kids. 300, they play nine-man football. Have you heard of nine-man football? Yeah, some, some kids in Montana play six-man football with the small numbers. First down by, so let's go down to Stormy. Yeah, Cordell playing nine-man football, plays on the offensive line, defensive line, tight end, fullback, linebacker, puncher, and kicker. Said he's available if they need him to kick. All good. But the funnest thing, I think, about that small town was he said everybody does their part to make it go and said, no joke, like the woman who ran the beauty salon when he was in high school also drove one of the buses for school, and she also waited tables at the restaurant in town. They do it all. Got to pitch in. Everybody carry your weight, right? Let's say everybody carry your own weight now. I was wondering, he's 6'7", 300 pounds. At 6'7", he could have played quarterback, but he must not have an arm at all. <laughs> That's the one position he said he never played. And off. Uh, left side for Williams Volson went to his head coach before this year I mean he's been around forever playing his 65th game and he made a list of goals for his head coach that he shared with his coach before the season started and one of them was I want to be the greatest North Dakota State player of all time and he's a very humble he's not a you know he's not wasn't bragging. he wasn't bragging but he is certainly one of the all time greats first team all American his coach did not hesitate that right there is the best offensive lineman in FCS football. Second and seven Patterson in the game at quarterback. O'Reilly with the stop. You know, and, and the mantra, you know, hanging around all these bison players, bison players, forgive me, is they all say, and I think we heard first from Cordell Volson was, we have to leave it in better shape than it was when we got here. I mean, it's hard to do. <laughs> which is hard to do, but every year they try to do it. And let's think about it. They've got a brand new $50 million indoor facility coming, which is going to make things even more impressive for the bison, make it more difficult to beat, but. That's how you keep the dynasty going. Third and seven, play fake. Miller's going to throw. End zone, incomplete. Well, Babbage was there. He already has one touchdown catch today. And just a little too far. A little too far, but I'd like to see this young man make this catch. Ooh, that's, that's, a out. that's a tough one. That is a tough one there. But we always I talked about it earlier. Tight ends have a smaller catch radius than the wide receivers. A little bit off target with that throw. There's Bison football. You don't make the catch. Get back in there on special teams. Your shoulder pads <laughs> sticking out. Go block for the kicker. Who boots it right on through from 37 yards out. Everything going right for Matt Entz. Looking for his second national championship in three years as the head coach. You know, they lost a game. They're 13 and one. They lost a game, and that's news in Fargo. You, you lose a game, it's like, man, wait, what's going on? Uh, I think that's why Montana State thought they had hope because North Dakota State was beat by South Dakota State during the regular season, and Montana State absolutely trounced South Dakota State. But the, and one thing about the fan base, I'd say, is they appreciate. It. So if they would have come in here and lost this game, they're not sore losers. They would have said, hey, Montana State got us today they just had our number because in their rivalry with James Madison it's mutual respect and this is a knowledgeable fan base a little bit crazy we've seen that they show the crazy side that's what they call them fans for fanatics 
but they love this Bison football team. Still, to me, one of the all-time memorable college game day scenes when the crew went to Fargo <laughs> a few years ago. Well, didn't they name a didn't they name a calf Corso? <laughs> yeah. Something like that. They loved they it. Did. That. Lee Corso, big in Fargo. Big return for Montana State. And a good return. Special teams has been a bright spot for the Bobcats. Elijah Elliott. Almost to midfield. Well, our Capital One Cup standings. Teams competing for a combined $500,000 in student athlete scholarships from Capital One on the men's side, Clemson, Washington, Georgetown up there, Northern Arizona. How about that? How about Florida that? State and Wisconsin <laughs> leading on the women's side. Well, how about Northern Arizona? That would have been a shocker to a lot of folks. Flagstaff, got a lot going on yeah. in Flagstaff. Yeah. It snows in Northern Arizona. A lot of oh, people don't know yeah. that. Are you, are you kidding? <laughs> Final 30 seconds of the third quarter in Frisco, Texas. Home away from home for the Bison of North Dakota State. Little pass out into the right flat. Snell, the tight end. He's got a little juice into North Dakota State territory. He's he's from Anchorage, Alaska. Okay. <laughs> How about spreading your geographic portfolio, <laughs> showing diversification throughout the United States? Nobody recruits Alaska like the Bobcats. <laughs> Rovig is going to run it. Tucker Rovig tumbles forward for another Bobcats first down. And now a Bison player back in the backfield is down. James Kayser, good linebacker, a senior. And he's been the guy, he battled adversity all season long, had been bit by the injury bug pretty much all season, and unfortunately looks like he's got to come out for a couple plays now, but he showed the perseverance. How about James? James got married during the bye week in the regular <laughs> season. What did you do for the bye week? Yeah, I went on a weekend trip. No, I got married. Uh, they didn't get the play snap. The clock started Part of the again. Snap. That's the end That's of the, the third, end of the quarter. third quarter. quarter. So we've come to the end of the third quarter. Tough day for the Bobcats. The celebration hasn't started, but it's getting revved up for the Bison. If you love college football the way we do, you just have to love the scene of the fans here in huge numbers with even bigger enthusiasm. The costumes, two totally passionate fan bases from North Dakota State, from Montana State. And even though the game has been lopsided and the quarterback gets hurt for the Bobcats to sort of take the air out of the balloon early in the game. And still, the fans are engaged here in Frisco as we start the fourth quarter. We'll play fake across the middle, too high, incomplete. Intended for McCutcheon, nearly intercepted. It'll be second down. I really like to go back to your point with there with the fans and the passion. They appreciate their program. They really have. I mean, they're going blow for blow, chant for chant, cheer for cheer, all in a classy way there. And it's been a Fantastic sight this week down here in Frisco, Texas. Rovig will hand the ball off. Afonse, Isaiah Afonse, who should be back next year. I mean, Montana State fans are going to be disappointed by this, but get the young quarterback Tommy Mullot healthy. Bring back some of your big playmakers on the offensive side. The defense should be solid again. You got a head coach you have to love in his first year, Brent Vegan. The future seems bright. I think these two programs will be battling for years to come. The freshman quarterback, the lot will be back, go along with the playmakers. This program is definitely trending in the right direction. Throw, sideline, caught on third down. Short, so Bobcats are going to go for it on fourth down. Here's Brent Vegan, the head coach, former Bison player, coordinator, now on the other sideline. Fourth and three. 
Rovig was pressured incomplete into traffic trying to get the tight end Snell. And the pressure got to him. Eli Mostard, Braden Thomas both were there. Two of the stalwarts for NDSU. A big in this championship game. Noon Pacific. So soon. North Dakota State churning towards a ninth FCS championship. And they have the ball back. A little jet sweep action on first down. And that was well defended. Now, the game's been out of hand for a while. Montana State's defense has been better in the second half. Better. That was Phoenix Sproles, who's been a great contributor in a lot of ways to this NDSU program. And that's, he's a good story for college football. It's a young man that got his playing time on the field by paying his dues and becoming the number one blocking wide receiver on the roster. He was such a factor in the running game, blocking. So, hey, let's give him a little bit more time, and he's made the most of his opportunity. 20 catches on the season coming into today. And that last play, he counts as the seventh different ball carrier. Christian Watson goes backwards. He got swarmed. Watson who's playing his final game with the Bison. He accepted an invitation to the Senior Bowl. You were talking about his talents earlier in the broadcast had missed all three playoff games with a hamstring injury. He's out there today and been a huge factor in the game. Super talented. We talk about, you know, tough blocking, right? So Watson, he's a speed guy. Now, bottom half of your screen, you'll see number 11, just chicken fighting the guy. Number seven, taking him on all the time. Why receivers contributing to the run game? The toughness of a rushing attack does not happen just between the tackles. It's those guys on the perimeter as well. Third down. Anderson comes with pressure and gets a hit on, and yet Miller completes it to Watson for a first down. Man, that was a tough guy throw for Cam Miller because he took a pop from the All-American. That's what you want from Watson. First thing you have to do is respect the speed so the DB's in the trail position. Uh-oh, you think he's going by you? Cuts on a dime, accurate throw. First and 10, Bison. Four catches, 61 yards. Size-speed combo. He's got real talent. Well, they clocked him running 21 miles an hour on a hamstring that was 80%. At 80%. Yeah, they do all that biometric uh, sort of tracking stuff. That's Cole Payton, the freshman quarterback, getting a chance to take a snap and run with the ball. And maybe Cam Miller, well, maybe he just needed a play. So Cole Payton came in. And now Miller back in. He needed some time to pick the, the grass out of his helmet <laughs> from that hit on that big completion. Good job that offensive coordinator Tyler Roll was done with bringing along the freshman quarterback Cam Miller. Who's been very solid down the stretch of the season after losing the job in fall camp. He'll run and get dragged down just before he got there. Daniel Hardy with the tackle. Sophomore from Iowa played last year and really before he was ready in the playoffs. It wasn't pretty North Dakota State. I say last year it was the spring season. They've cramped so many of these games into the last calendar year because of the pandemic. Didn't play real well in the playoffs then lost the starting job was down on himself. It's kind of a cool story how well he's played down the stretch able to emerge and if you're going to be the quarterback in North Dakota State you have to have thick skin. And you have to be tough. I mean, it's hard to follow the likes of Carson Wentz and Trey Lance. The, the, the bar is so high. They did not get it on third and short. So on fourth down, Cam Miller is coming to the sideline. It looks like. And Volson's yelling at the sideline, saying, let's go for it. But nobody's listening, Big Cordell. <laughs> <laughs> fourth uh, fourth down, they're going to punt. Yeah, fourth and one, quarterback sneak, they don't convert. And maybe a little sportsmanship involved. It's 38 to 3 in the fourth quarter. Booming punt. He's going to bounce into the end zone. So that'll be a touchback. And it sends us to a timeout with 9.51 to go. North Dakota State 
playing for a championship again at Frisco. State the scouting report, you have to take away their A gap power. They run exceptionally well in between their guard. When in trouble, what do the running backs do? Take it back to the inside. And Hunter Lipke's done a good job here. Looks outside, nope, one step, get back to the middle field. That's where the power comes from. Another look right here. Bring a lead rusher through. No, you don't run to the outside, avoid contact. They like to take on contact. At the teeth of your defense is where North Dakota State's offense shows their A gap power. At the end of the day it all comes down to that that's what it's all about 203 yards in the a gap the b gap's okay and outside's okay <laughs> but at the end of the day in these conditions it's been the power of their a gap running attack which has gotten it done imposing their will on the bobcats a little a gap run for montana state straight ahead this is going to be number nine and they will go nine for nine. I mean, to me, one of the most amazing aspects of this dynasty in Fargo is this is their ninth FCS championship game. They're going to be nine for nine. <laughs> nine and oh. And when you think of modern sports dynasties, you know, obviously you put North Dakota State there, but let's think about the NBA. What was the last dynasty we saw? Chicago Bulls. And the key thing about that was Michael Jordan was six and oh in championships. That's what kind of makes him the GOAT. If you ask me, I am going to push back. I mean, I, the Warriors, I don't know. My, Come my on, Golden man. State Warriors. That's how, many pretty ring, close. how many rings are that? That's three. That's okay, I good. just told you six. Six and oh, Michael Jordan. And nobody else got a ring until Jordan took a little two year hiatus. Point, point is a good one, though. The undefeated record <laughs> in that championship level. First down. And a short pass. Alfonso is so tough to bring down. Running pass complete. All time FCS championships. This is going to be number nine. Add to their lead. Georgia Southern, of course, is now playing at the FBS level. Youngtown State with their great history. They've got four of them. You know, and I compete, competed, and I played one double A or FCS football there. Had Georgia Southern stuck around, they would have won some more. You talk about that Marshall squad was on their way to winning a lot before they moved up as well. But I still, that being said, I still don't know if the Appalachian States of the world and all them would have been as impressive as this run is from North Dakota State. Some other teams are going to take a step up. Sam Houston State, James Madison, some of the powerhouse teams are going to be on the move up. By the way, another reminder, NCAA men's and women's indoor track and field championships. Coverage on uh, March 13th is when it starts from Birmingham, 930 Eastern on ESPNU on the app. For more info, visit NCAA.com, home for all 90 NCAA championships. Eight minutes to go. Countdown is on for title number nine. And on third and short, good effort, but stop short, Sumner. Number 24, Lane Sumner, ball carrier. Eight of one, Montana State. One of those things that's going to kind of get at you. It's fourth and one. Let's see if quarterback lines up in shotgun. So you already got to make up four yards to get to the line of scrimmage. Something that we see a lot in college football. I'm not a big fan of it. We'll see if they can pull it off. Infonse gets the first down and plenty more, almost to midfield. It's the second fourth down conversion of the game for the Bobcats. There have been a lot of big plays today, Jay, for Montana State, especially early. And they've had 15 first downs, but a lot of big third and medium, third and short, where Tommy Malott in the playoffs had been unstoppable. Just so hard to defend with his speed for the quarterback spot. Yeah, they, they really needed him. I mean, offensively, you can tell this offense is geared around, as everybody around the conference calls him, the kid. The kid is special. He's got that special knack, that it factor. And when you take away that, Take away the leading offensive threat from an offense, then you're in for a long day offensively. Played seven plays today in this championship game. And had to leave with that ankle injury. I mean, it's really, it's such a, such an amazing story. It's hard to find a parallel. Had never started a game until the playoffs. They make the quarterback change. He plays three games against some of the power programs at this level. All those pass yards, the rush yards, 11 touchdowns in three weeks. 
leads them to the championship game as the eight seed. When I see those numbers, a defensive coordinator's worst nightmare is a dual threat quarterback. One that can hurt you with his legs as well as his arm. And you saw that 400 yards rushing, 400 yards passing, and responsible for 11 touchdowns. This kid's going to be an impact player for the next couple years on the FCS level. Fonse bounces it right. Man, breaking tackles along the sideline for another Bobcats first down. They were talking about Tommy Malott when he was hurt in that semifinal game against South Dakota State. Defonse was hurt. Malott, he, he carried the ball 34 times in that semifinal game. Was he playing running back or was he playing quarterback? Uh, 34 <laughs> rushes from the quarterback. Play fake over the top. McCutcheon jump ball touchdown. 28 yards and the first touchdown of this championship game for Montana State. They're still here. Look at these fans. Do they know what the score is of the game? They don't care. You're talking about supporting your football team. I love it. Great football play here. When you're six foot three and the defensive back that's covering you is five ten, go up and get it at its highest point. Well executed. Extra point up and good. 5.08 to go. Something positive for those Bobcat fans, young and old. We're all going to watch Alabama go for another national championship on Monday. The two powerhouse dynasties in college football right now. These North Dakota State buys in the Alabama Crimson Tide. This is going to be number nine for North Dakota State. Alabama going for number six in the last decade plus two first round quarterbacks on each side. The overall record. I mean, it is amazing the comparisons you can make between those two programs. They let you know how dominating they've been and for North Dakota State getting number nine. Well, they play anybody. How about this? Next year, they're going to play the University of Arizona. That is going to be their first game against an FBS team in six years. You know why? They don't want to play them. They Nobody, wants to play them. <laughs> Nobody wants to play them. They beat too many of them. Yeah, I think their last game they played against an FBS team was Iowa State. They went there and beat them, and everybody said that's enough for a while, but good to see these guys going to get an opportunity to play an FBS program next year. Forty and three all time in the FCS playoffs. Forty and three. You could just you could go on and on, but with different head coaches, different quarterbacks, different rosters, obviously, and the success just does not stop. And the, and the style of play has been different. You know, when they had Craig Bowl, it was power football. He established the offensive line running the football and then when Carson Wentz came he was a prototypical passer they were getting him ready for the drop back in the play action game started throwing the ball a little bit more and when Trey Lance came along they just opened it up I mean they said we know we run the ball but he's too talented to hand it off 35 times a game to so give credit to Matt Ince and his staff said we got to highlight this kid get him ready for the NFL as a thrower and he made it now this year what did they go to kind of a little bit of a go back to the running game go back to the things that work and put the running quarterback at in the play and heck they were all happy about it but they were all I mean nobody expected Trey Lance to be so good so fast to where he'd only essentially be there for one year I mean he just was so dominant and then the pandemic interrupted last year oh Brock Jensen yeah Brock got it all started at least in this era Easton Stick was a great player yes. 49 career wins Trey Lance a Walter Payton award winner Call Brock Jensen an OG. Saw Brock here. He's here. Spoke to the team and spoke to everybody else. We played a couple years in the CFL as well. But that's an impressive list there. All those guys went on to play professional football. Brock was a two-time MVP of this 
FCS championship game. So many former players on both sides are here in Texas to watch this game. Proud of their alma maters. Quincy Patterson. Tough running for him. First down by That's how you use 245 pounds. Your quarterback at 245 pounds. Short yard situation. The linebacker can't bring you down when you're just as big as he is. Forward lean. First down coming up here. Let's go down to the sideline to Stormy. Dave, you mentioned all those big names at quarterback for North Dakota State, and I talked to Cam Miller about that QBU, and he said it means so much to him to be a part of that and kind of a next stage in this progression of quarterbacks, but that it's a lot of pressure. And, and the fan base, there's a lot of pressure there as well, and so part of his goals this year and moving forward was to prove himself right and to prove the fan base and prove to this team that he could lead them to a national championship. So you know this moment means so much to him. Absolutely. I mean, replacing a legend is tough enough. I and mean, the expectation level that Stormer just talked about, they have a level of expectation at North Dakota State. And rule number one is we don't care about the passing yards and the touchdown, the interception ratio win. They judge their quarterbacks by dubs. How many W's can you bring us? And it must end here in Frisco to be considered a bison legend. That is Williams on the move into Montana State territory. Another bison first down. I think they would like to end this game with the football. Two minutes to go until another national championship. And, and you talk about the winning, and, and winning for me in college football, it, it starts at the top. You know, academic athletic building in North Dakota State's going to lose their president. He's a retiring Dean Bruschani. When you talk to Coach Ince about him, he said meant a lot to me and what he's done for this university. And I think the key was they weren't satisfied with just winning a championship. They wanted to keep winning, investing in their program, and they're going to have a change in leadership. And I think it's a job well done for President Bruschani. So big old Cody Mauk have to sort of limp off the field. Didn't look real happy to have to come out of the game. When we're finished, we got the uh, trophy ceremony coming up following the game, so stick with us for that. Bison over 500 total yards now on the afternoon. Final snaps here for Cordell Volson and his incredible career. 65 college games. Oh, oh the blue stuff. <laughs> oh, that one surprised the head coach. He wasn't ready for that one. Well, they say he's a player's coach and he understands how good that cold bath feels. Final snaps on the other side for Troy Anderson. His incredible Montana State career will always be a legend in the history of that program. Three years, two national titles for Matt Ants. And a year that wasn't quite as smooth. I mean, look, they're going to end up 14 and 1. Still, wasn't as smooth as the 16 and 0, just total, utter dominance of his first year as a head coach. Maybe makes it a little more satisfying in a way. This is going to be the final snap of this national championship game. Incredible. They've done it again. FCS championship number nine for North Dakota State. And they are headed up into the concourse before the final seconds tick off with the band to the stage to celebrate another national title in Fargo. Incredible. They've done it so many times. They know where the trophy presentation is. As soon as the game ended, they ran to get in front of the band and say, come on, this is part of North Dakota State football. We end the season on the concourse with our T-shirts and caps. Give us our trophy. Home away from home. Nobody knows this place like these guys do. Let's go down to Stormy. Well, congratulations, Coach. An unstoppable performance, it seemed, from your team from start to finish. What impressed you most about how they got this done? Ability to, to run the football. Good football team over there, very well coached. And uh, just how our guys handled. This was the 369th day we've been playing football. 
We started last January 4th, and we finished her today, and our coaches, our players, unbelievable. You said this is a moment that you guys have been thinking about since the postseason ended for you early last year. What does this moment just mean to you all as a group for the hard work you put in? Well, I don't think we talk about it much, but I think in the back of our minds, this is where we thought we should be. But we just kept attacking one game at a time, and we have a process. Our kids believe in it, and it works. Had the ice bath feel. It was cold. <laughs> Enjoy this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it looked cold. It'll warm up soon. They asked the fans not to come on the field. How can you keep them from wanting to celebrate? National championship number nine for this dynasty program North Dakota State. We will step aside when we come back. We're going to have the trophy celebration and ceremony from Frisco 38 to 10 the final score Bison on top again.